Now then, you're all right. I'm, uh, I'm heading down to meet my ginger nut friend, Ian Lawrence, and uh, we're going to Roach Abbey, which apparently is haunted. Probably isn't. And um, that's in Yorkshire. Land of the gods. Yorkshire ghosts. The monks, apparently. We'll find out about that later on. And then we're going to do some bushcrafty stuff. So I've got um, two tarps with me. They're both camouflage. So once I put my tent up, I won't find it. And then um, we'll be having a fire. I, uh, I made a chilli last night, uh, which was that very small video that I put up. Once I'd done the, the chilli video, I wondered how I was going to send it to him because basically I just wanted to make sure it was vegan, and it is. So I've got that, we'll warm that up, uh, pre-bake some potatoes, we're just going to uh, char the uh, outside of the sweet corn, corn on the cob, and uh, get chewing that. So that's going to be uh, enjoyable. And um, he's also bringing CB radios. Would you give me a CB radio? We all know how that's going to end, so uh, stay tuned. So um, I met this guy, and uh, we're just heading down to Roach Abbey. Now I've never been here before. Uh, it's not raining, which is great, and it's really nice, very nice, in fact. Um, I can just see the abbey coming out of the, uh, well, the end of this road. It looks really good. Well, I can see of it. Just want to look at that. So this is a, a gatehouse apparently, well, the second gatehouse, and um, yeah, it's very well kept, apart from people scribing their names. So that door there, um, flight of stairs that takes you upstairs, and that was sort of a conference room apparently, or what we would call a conference room. Isn't that nice? So Ian is stood where back in the olden days when humans weren't as nice as they are today um, if there was a suspected witch, could the witch only be female or was it male and females? So it's a, what I call it, isn't it? Uh, it's not a witch, it's a male, it's a... A wizard? No. Uh, it's a... a gargoyle, what I call it. Anyway, then. Right. No well, where Ian's actually stood is where you would land once they've thrown you from there to see if you were a witch. And if it, you didn't die, they then took you over to that stream over there and around you. So they worked to, to work out which you were. Yeah. Our humans are great. Yes, that's a cracky. Top mark. But the Abbey's beautiful. Highly recommend coming down and having a look. I thought I'd bring you around. I thought you would. Yeah, it's lovely. We're going to go stone ends now. <laughs> We're all out of the window to think of the mega Olympics. Right, so um, we've we've walked along a tarred, muddy path behind us and we've decided at this point that we're then going to start heading up this hill. Now, Ian is going to be uh, using a military-style compass as opposed to... Lensatic. A lensatic compass, right? And um, we're going to be walking on a bearing. So once we get to the top of this uh, very small hill, it's not very high at all, it'll be tiring, but it's not very high, um, we're then going to uh, make a, a little note of what we found at the top of the hill, be it a rock or you know a funny shaped tree, and then we're going to set another bearing, and we're going to walk on that bearing. Ian's got a, a clicker, and he's going to be clicking every other footstep till we get to another point, and we're going to continue doing this. So, should anything go wrong in the middle of the night, should we get uh, lost, should we need to get out, anything like that, we can then backtrack using these notes and the right amount of paces and the features and find ourselves back to this path. So this is also going to be a good uh, learning curve for me because I'm planning a pirate themed um, treasure hunt and um, that's with the, the, the Lakeland meetup uh, gang and it's going to be uh, a great time uh, dressed up as a pirate, uh, scabbards and you know patches and all this kind of thing. Um, if you have got a problem with your eye and you need to wear a patch that's okay. Uh, why are you laughing at that? Um, but old, young, all welcome, and um, it's going to be a good day. So let's go and learn how to do this.
this stuff. Um, so this is a, a fallen, uh, decaying birch tree. So we've got the resin-rich uh, bark on the outside. But this stuff, this stuff here, um, apparently you boil it. No, on the inside, it's got to be in this kind of condition. On the inside of here, on the top, you see it's flat on top and it bears round a bit like a bee, like a, a wasp nest. If you crack that away, and then just underneath this flat layer here, there's like a leathery effect. And if you boil it a couple of times, you can use it to hold the spark. When you, uh, so you, if you need to pass from one place to another and take fire with you, you can use that to hold the spark while you pass long distances. Is this what Aborigines use? I've seen know. something similar in it. I'm sure it was Aborigines that did it. There's many variations of it. Yeah. So that, the other fungus that I've got, that could be used as well. See, I, I'm not going to take any of this for two reasons. Firstly, I don't know how to use it. So if I take it, it's just going to decay and rot and... I don't want to do that. I'm going to watch what this man does with it. I'm going to learn by watching what he does with it. And then the next time I find some, I'm going to take it and then I'm going to have a go with it. Well, later on, I'll, I'll use my fire steel. I'll crack a spark onto this stuff. I'll go in my bag, same stuff. Yeah. And see if it holds a spark so we can get fire going with yeah. it. Yeah. How cool would that be if you met that into a bowl? The tree itself is rotted out. And all you've got to do is trim that round. Put a bottom in it. Yeah. You've got you've got a container. I mean, the reason I started the GoPro was just to literally have a little panoramic shot, and then we fell across that. But uh, we've probably walked a, a further ten foot, found something else. All this moss on the floor is um, it's got like antibacterial properties to it. So if you're going to have a wild poo, there's your toilet paper. But it's just stunning. There's a looks like a deer fence over there for some reason. It's just beautiful and there's nothing up here, there's no, I mean, ha happily there's no rubbish or, you know, burnt out fire pits or out like that. But this is absolutely stunning. Confession time. Um, I foolishly, or naively, I think that's a better word, only brought three quarters of a litre of water, expecting, as the Lake District, that you're never too far away from any water. And we haven't seen streams, we haven't seen ponds, anything up this high where we are at the moment oh, so Ian's bragging um, so a little bit concerned about that Ian's offered me the, the water that he's got because he doesn't drink a lot of water but I do drink a lot of water um, so we're actually heading away from a road that we've just found behind us um, and we're heading back over towards the the hill just to the side of the abbey you see this way don't work with children and animals on television especially red ones if you've unsubscribed from Ian, thanks. Um, after doing all the walking on bearings and writing down features and stuff, we're basically back to where we started. We couldn't find anywhere to camp up there. There's a lot of uh, bird enclosures and stuff like that. Um, so we've come back down and this is the water that we were walking next to earlier so I've replenished my water supply um, and now we're going off in a different direction and we should be looking over the abbey um, from this this viewpoint so I'm pretty excited about that so I've got my water we've got a good idea where we're going so let's go Top back, hill, mate. right we think we found our home for the night um, look at the daffodils you can hear, I hope you can hear, and uh, over the top of the wildlife, uh, the waterfall, for which I just got the water from. So we're not very far away from that at all. Um, but this is where we're gonna call home for the evening. So somebody has already had a fire. So we will be making use of that, modifying it and uh, making it as it should be. And if we look over here, That's the abbey down there. Um, this is obviously deadfall. No, this will do. Right, that's some hard work to be done and I'll be glad to take this rucksack off. So, progress. We moved away from the, uh, the logs over there where the fireplace is and we've come to basically view the, 
the abbey just over there and um yeah we put the we put the tents up now ian wanted to do this isn't a bushcraft camp but he wanted to stay away from tents we did the tent thing in the peak district you know i like tents so he said right bring a tarp and all that lot. so that's what we've done so this is ian's cell and he's basically rigged up one guy line to there and he's uh, he's made himself a pole and then he's just pinned it down suspended it up there as well little ground sheet and his view very nice straight over there so because um i like tents i made a tent i like tents steven's tent i hope i can find it we're being camouflaged later tent. Right, Well, Ian's been asleep, I've done all this. Oh no, that's not right. Ian's done all this. Hello. And um, he found a vine to basically tie these three together. And he said in his version of the video that he expected it this time of year to be like that. So he's absolutely bang on. Now earlier, we found a roll of sellotape, which was actually still sticky. So I'm going to go and find that and put that together with sellotape. Now that's bushcraft right there. No, he's not. He's not going to use solid tape. I'm going to go and get some <laughs> Those of you scrutinising these videos may notice a slight continuity error. We sort of moved camp a little bit. Ian advised me not to bring... Um, I said I was bringing two tarps. He said, oh, you, know, you won't need that other tarp, thinking that I was going to rig up some great shelter. What I was actually going to do was use it underneath me, you know, like a little carpet. So he's kindly lent me his MOD um, bivvy bag to just just protect my knee away. Um, so yeah, it was. So that's basically how I'm running. Um, if it does start to rain, which which it might do, don't know. Um, very simply, I can re-rig that and um, you know make that into uh, you know a waterproof shelter. And uh, this is how Ian's running. And I do think that's a very tidy looking. Very tidy looking setup. Right, the um, tapping of a, a birch tree. Uh, we're too late in the year, basically, so I know how to do it now. Um, it is something I want to try, and uh, I will be doing that in the future. So, what are we going to do? I hear you ask. Well, I'm going to try and make something out of wood, and the thing that I'm going to try and make is a spoon. So we found a lovely dry piece of uh, wood and uh, with this piece I'm basically going to get that uh, my Fisker axe and chop that down the middle so I'm going to then have sort of two half logs and then with my Christmas present that I haven't used yet um, I'm going to whittle and whittle and whittle so that's what's happening So you have to push again to record, don't you? No, it's it's gone now. That's the bit that I want. Top marks. Yeah, that's it, mate. Yeah, nice one. Right, that's supper. So, potato, uh, vegan corn uh, from the uh, yesterday's video, and then over there, 
still cooking is the sweet corn. Let's get tucked into this. Yum, 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 yum. Morning. Um, slept well in my rickety old shelter. Uh, there was no wind really. I mean that that little sort of feature flat thing there did about as much wagging as it's doing now. Um, snug as a bug. Uh, you were all right in there, weren't you? Liam? I was absolutely cock a doodle. Yeah. Um, so we're up now. Going to get a coffee on, which is essential, I think, first thing in the morning. Um, I've started to strip down the uh, the, the the setup and pack. Um, it doesn't take Ian very long to do it, but uh, yeah, getting a coffee on is uh, is top priority. And again, this weather wasn't forecast, and you just sort of look around behind me, massive head. It's beautiful. I just saw a, a, quite a, a big pheasant over there as well, which is uh, unexpected. Yeah, good camp. So where Ian stood is where the fire pit was. Um, if you remember the the stones and uh, sort of debris from previous sort of campers was left there and this is how we're leaving it which is pretty much as you're supposed to leave it as standard. Um, Ian's pitch there exactly as it should be. Mine's over here. Leave no trace. If uh, if Bigfoot can spend all that time in the wild and leave no trace and I'm sure we can when we come out for a weekend under a tarp. You have, Mr. Laidlaw. So, I, I, like, obviously, I've eaten like differently and what have you with the time I'm away and what have you. And, uh, yeah, I'm feeling quite. quite well, it's, good. That, it's ironic that you've come to have you the lost any weight gate, because this gate will test if you've lost any weight. No, it says uh, Sandra Kissing's gate. Well, it's the same kind of thing. Well, there you go, mate. There you go, mate. Push it. Come on, I'm come on, lose gets, that weight. This is it, I'm gone. Lose that weight. That's it. Oh. Feel better? Yeah, about six pounds off, I think. How do you feel about dropping your flag? Oh, no, top match. Ah, I'm good, you see. See, this is these. I'm going to have to get an aluminum foil out. Aluminum foil? Yeah. Top match. 